Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Business Banter this fine, fantastic, I almost said effing, but fantastic Thursday. It is Thursday, right? It is Thursday. Hey, you guys, welcome to the show. This week is awesome. I know I say that every week, but you know, what do you do? Hey, so this is Casey Everhart calling in from Los Angeles. Uh, and you know what? As before Richard and I started talking, so this is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to let you actually sponsor my forehead. <laughs> if you would like to have me print your logo on my forehead, it's we can haggle over the price later. Anyways, well, I digress. Hey, you guys, we've got a very special guest today, so I want to go ahead and introduce, first off, I want to introduce Karen Glasser. She's kind of the creator, the producer, the chief passionista, the passion officer. She's just kind of like that everything gal that basically runs, uh, runs circles around most entrepreneurs. So, uh, Karen, welcome to the show. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon or evening, wherever you happen to be at this time when you're watching the show. <laughs> I, I should just actually just hit the button and make the video just stay on Karen the entire time. <clears throat> um, and our very special guest today uh, is Richard Hassman. And Richard is from the businessresourceguy.com. I know I just was like, what? I, Richard's awesome, you guys. We're going we're gonna to be talking about something really cool today. So, Richard, welcome to the show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I am very happy to be here, sloped side from beautiful Snowbird, Utah. Yes, you're all jealous. I was going to say, it's really hideous there. You really should consider moving to, like, Pacoima. Yeah, it's, it's really been tough. They're, they're calling it Apruary here because of the weather. They're having January weather in April. That is crazy. Is it good skiing? Amazing skiing and amazing, um, uh, uh, amazing weather, amazing skiing, great place. We have a beautiful place here. Um, and what's really cool about it is um, my girlfriend, who's an attorney, and myself both get work done while we're here um, because, you know, the great, wide, wonderful World Wide Web allows us to work from wherever we're at. And we're going to, let's, I want to talk about that for a minute. Um, you know, one of the things that we talk a lot about is we have a lot of guests on the show and they always want to talk about their particular um, specialty or whatever. And that's cool, but I like talking about actual concepts um, that I think are really important to business, to, to business folks. And one of them, I know you are the master and that's schmoozing. So, uh, <laughs> So let's talk about kind of the difference between networking, the difference between schmoozing, sort of the difference between brown nosing. You know, I think there are lots of different sort of nuances to this to this word called schmoozing. Well, you know, I think that sh the way that I like to look at schmoozing is that it really just is a matter of just being a really friendly person who cares about forming relationships with other people. It's not like something you put on your checklist, you know, that says, make sure I schmooze today. Um, it's, it's not like, um, you know, a task that you have to achieve. It really, first of all, it just, the act of schmoozing, just really asking people about, um, you know, who they are, what they're up to, what excites them. Um, asking more questions than talking is a good, uh, what I think is a good way of looking at schmoozing. You know, schmoozing is really trying to learn about other people. They will ask you about yourself. I know we all love to talk about ourselves. And, and, but in saying that, I realize that's not true. Not everybody loves to talk about themselves. A lot of people are very shy. Um, they're not natural. So it's possible for them to become schmoozers by just going out and trying to make friends with everyone. There was a great author... Um, John K. Lynch, who was one of the great network marketing generic teachers of all time, and he said, your goal is to go out and make a million friends. And so I look at schmoozing as the fact that I'll make friends everywhere I go, whether I wind up doing business with them or not. It's not a business technique. Schmoozing is just being a friendly person and making friends everywhere you go. Yeah, it's really funny. I used to, uh, I used to train a lot. I actually did a big blog post about this that if you meet three pe three new people a day 
And each of those people are roughly connected to 250 kind of people in their inner circle or whatever. At the end of the year, you have access to over 100,000 people potentially in your network just by simply meeting three people a day and based on the power of 250. I used to I used to force myself because I, I am actually fairly shy and introverted unless I'm at sort of out in, in the in the space. I used to actually put three quarters in my pocket or three silver dollars in my right hand pant pocket and I wouldn't go to bed until I had conversations with three new people a day and every time I'd have one I'd move the dollar over to the left hand side of my pants pocket and that's how I knew how many new people I had met a day and I had this whole goofy game of I needed to have their name, their email address, and their phone number. And that was my that was my way of training myself to get out and sort of network. But um, now in today's marketplace, it seems like you can pretty much – you can schmooze by not even really A, schmoozing, or B, even talking to the person. And I'll give you a great example, and I'd love your thoughts on this. I started doing this on my Facebook page that – on the right hand or the left hand side, I can see the eight people that have been on my page. You know, when it shows those friends, those are the last people that were on your page. So because I know they recently visited my page, what I do is I now, if I know them personally or if I don't, I'll tag them in a post to say, hey, Grace Kyoko, it was great to, you know, I'd love to catch up. Hope you're doing well. And I just literally booked a speaking engagement because I did that with one line on a stupid Facebook post. To me, that's schmoozing. It is schmoozing, and, and there's a uh, the digital schmooze is what I call that. And there's there's Ooh, a great, I like that. There's a great. Way I'm hoping that somebody's going to GoDaddy right now and buying the digital schmooze.com. Yeah, thank you, Karen. And here's my and my credit card number. I'll text it to you right now. Um, the digital schmooze is highly underused. You know, people become friends of friends on Facebook. And then three months later, they're annoyed at all of the posts that pop up on their Facebook feed from that person that they friended because they thought it would be valuable to friend, you know, Casey's friend Grace. But they never took the time to meet Grace. Now, you don't have to go have coffee with Grace. Maybe Grace or, or anyone that I friended um, or that a friend suggested I meet. But if a friend suggested you meet someone in person, you would get to know them. And people don't do that because it's so easy to just keep them in your Facebook list um, and, and just read their posts and make an occasional comment. The digital schmooze is, is doing exactly what you just talked about, Casey. It's making sure that you reach out to that person. And then you can really say, you know, I have you know 800 friends on Facebook, and I've actually either met or spoken with all of them. You know, had some kind of conversation because you really never, ever, ever know what's going to come out of those conversations. And I actually, it's not a digital schmooze, but I'll give a really good example for people who are introverted about schmoozing. So my primary business for a number of years now has been point of sale systems and credit card processing. So every business I go to, I'm like the guy who's like looking, you know, I'm like peering over the counter. I want to see what their credit card terminal or computer system is. And I use that as kind of like my icebreaker. And so we were at this great ski mountain called Powder Mountain last week, which is here. It's a smaller mountain here in, in, in Utah. And it was really cool. Like we're in the bar area. And I noticed that they have a point of sale system, but they don't have the credit card integrated into their point of sale system. Now that, for me, that's like a red flag. So I start schmoozing with the bartender, and I was like, hey, how come you don't have the credit card, you know, hooked up with it? She's like, oh, well, you know, management. Oh, they By the way, that makes you a geek. Oh, totally, totally. I'm, I'm a geek for the things that I, that I, told, that I love and, I, and that I do in business, and even things I don't do in business. I love things that other people do. But so I garnered information from making friends and schmoozing with the bartender that – I wasn't even thinking necessarily I could use to try and get Powder Mountain's credit card processing business, but later that day, but wait, there's more. Later that day, we're in the the gear shop, you know, where you buy, you know, hats and and, and goggles and things like that, and I'm chit-chatting and schmoozing 
with the guy who runs the gear shop, and it's their last day of the year. So we're having an interesting conversation, and it leads to, he's like, oh, man, I'm going to have to inventory everything that's left that isn't sold. And I'm like, and I'm looking at his little computer system, and I said, you don't even really have a good point of sale system that will help you with the inventory and all that. I'm like, how come? He's like, well, management, blah, 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 blah. He's like, same thing the bartender tells me. And so there's my opening. Now, I wasn't looking for an opening necessarily. I was just curious because I love what I do. And when I go places and I see people doing things that they could be doing better, I'm trying to make their lives better you know, by offering a suggestion. Whether they do business with me or not, I'd be happy to send them an email or a, a flyer or something that would help them. Turns out, not 30 seconds later, the controller, the bookkeeper controller, of the entire Powder Mountain Ski Resort comes around the corner and the guy who runs the gear shop introduces me to her and now we're following up on May 1st um, about me actually coming in and doing some training and helping their entire point of sale and credit card processing system. It all started with the schmooze and that was a live schmooze, it was an actual human schmooze live and in person. But you could do the same thing digitally. When you see, when you comment on other people's posts, um, don't comment to put the checklist off that I went and made a comment on somebody's post. What you did with Grace, um, the example you used, was you were trying to engage her in a conversation with you and the people on your Facebook page, right? Not to, like, get a gig from Grace. It's yeah. very yeah. altruistic. Schmoozing is an altruistic way of networking with people versus, you know, I'm going to a chamber of commerce mixer to get X number of business cards. So Yeah, I mean, the, you know, obviously, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, once you get the hang of it, even an introverted person can become really friendly and schmooze everywhere they go. Just take an interest in what other people are up to. Well, you know, one of the things that we, you know, and again, I'm a little biased just in, in my current role, but we're so about the digital schmooze and the digital environment that now when I go to a networking event, <clears throat> my goal is to, A, never go back. And the reason I can never go back is because I find the five most influential people in the room, and I take, I don't have it right, I should have had it right next to me, but I just take a little video camera and I say, hey, Richard, I'd love to get a couple of minute video. Let me find out more about your business. And I'll throw it up on YouTube and we'll put it on our blog. And I'll put a lead capture form so if people want to get in touch with you, they just have to fill out a form. And I'll send you the link of that video uh, so, that you can, so that you can pass it around to your friends. And what that does is it puts me in a third party, third party role of endorsing their business. I can drive traffic to, their, to, their, to that blog post that I create. And then the cool part is, whether they know it or not, by the powers of Google and the power of being in Yahoo, uh, I will be introduced to their network because people that search for them or what they do, if we optimize that post correctly, they'll get a lot of play out of that. And they'll be introduced to my network. So I'll give you an example. I did a speaking event a couple of weeks ago, and all the other speakers are trying to sell their wares. And I said, look, here's the deal. I'll make way more money after this event than I ever will at the event. So come over to my booth, and I have nothing to sell. All I want to do is do a two-minute video with you about your business and, and introduce you to my network. I did 40 interviews over the course of a weekend that are about to all be put up as individual blog posts. So now think about that. I'll be able to send them a link to a blog post of me interviewing them and talking about their business and how awesome it is, plus that, but I'll actually give away for people to get in touch with me, and I'll decide whether it's good to pass them off to them or not. It'll, it is such a schmooze factor that puts this whole thing on steroids. Yeah, I, I actually – I never thought of it until I said it right before you told that story, but it, I really believe the difference between schmoozing and specifically – you know, I'm going to network with someone to exchange leads. Is it's it comes from an altruistic place, and I'll be the shill right now for DNet and Mothernode, but uh, and I'm very happy to be. Um, but I I will have a lot of people in my network that will watch this video, and I'll 
So I will introduce to them that I'm now a part of DNet and Mother Node, which is these great organizations that came from Karen and Casey and Jennifer Bagley and Kathy Marshall, and, and I'm sure others, but have put together what I think is a collection of business services that you guys have put together in a very altruistic way, because I think that you're the training of teaching people to use business tools that everybody knows are out there, but nobody really uses to the full capabilities. Um, that That's kind of an altruistic business place to come from, and that's where schmoozing comes from. And it's funny, because you're really teaching exactly the example you just gave of the videos. I mean, you don't know that anything will ever come of that necessarily that will benefit your business, but I bet you felt really good doing it, and you know that all those people that you interviewed over the course of that weekend, most of them never would have thought of that. And I, I think that that's a key factor in, in being a schmoozer, but just in being a good business person and in connecting. Right now, we're in this time of the business world and business environment, and if people haven't gotten it, then they need to. It's all about connecting. Schmoozing is connecting. It's not working a lead. You know, it's, yeah. it's building a relationship. Well, you know, it's like with these 40 videos, the interesting thing is I absolutely went into it with 100% integrity. I mean, my uh, I knew what I was going to be able to create with that, but the other person, I made the case, I'm, this was the case I made. I made the case that if Richard and I go sit down for coffee, and that's going to take an hour getting ready in drive time plus an hour or two of coffee. So now we're into this three hours, let's call it, each of us. So we're collectively into it for six hours. Well, you're in Colorado or you're Utah, right? Utah. You're in Utah. I'm in California. The, um, the ability for me to pass you a leader opportunity uh, with you in Utah, I mean, I want you guys to think about what has to occur for me to give Richard a lead. First off, I have to know exactly what his business is. I have to be so connected to him that it's top of mind. I have to then be in an environment where somebody's talking about that. I have to remember to ask the right questions. Then I have to remember to get that person Richard's name and phone number. I've got to get their name and phone number and get that back to Richard. And hopefully, if all works out, the person is going to go Google Richard, and if Richard doesn't have a digital footprint or if nobody can find anything on him, there's a high likelihood that that's going to be dead in the water, and that person's going to go off on a rabbit hole and find somebody else and call him, and Richard just lost, lost the business because he doesn't have any uh, digital footprint. So realistically, that's a mess. However, you and I can do a video. This 30-minute video will get put up on YouTube. It'll have a lead capture form. You'll be able to, Karen will be able to take this, drop it on DNet with her lead capture form in a description. You'll be able to take this same video, drop it on you on DNet as well with your lead capture form, but a different description. And I'll be able to do the same thing. So really the three of us will be able to take this video and repurpose it in the DNet environment. Now, the idea that only the three of us are going to be promoting this is crazy because now you have a collaborative environment behind you promoting it, commenting, liking, and sharing. However, the cool thing is my description of the video is going to be very different than Richard's. Karen's is going to be different than mine. So because of that, the search engine picks it up based on different different keywords and different search terms. This 30 minutes will be seen if nobody sees it. We've got a chance to do what we would normally do in person, yet more efficient because we're doing it via digital environment. If one person watches this video when we're done, we have created a leveraged environment. And so that, I think, is the key, that in the world of digital space, the reality is that if somebody's looking for credit card processing, I want you to just think about all of the things that have to occur for me to be able to really pass you a piece of closed business. A lot. However, somebody might be be a big fan of Karen Glassers and promote your passion. Click on the video, start watching this, hear that you're schmooze and that you really are altruistic and that you take care of your customers and that you're really inquisitive and you try to provide resources to them and they happen to live in Utah. They could watch that and go, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I want to talk to Richard. Fill out that form and now there's a true lead and opportunity for you and there's not this whole 
conundrum of what has to occur for that to, to, to follow through. It's leverage is such a great key word that you use there because I really believe that that's as the three of us are, are, are really out there, like compared to the average business person or entrepreneur, the three of us are, we have no problem being out there, you know, like really out there, like trying things, recommending things, talking to other people about, about stuff, um, while most people are not. So if there's one thing that we could really help teach people, um, schmoozing often goes along with it, but it's leverage. And so, for, and actually, my business title, um, years ago when I started credit card processing, uh, when I was at the Chamber of Commerce in Sacramento, California, the Metro Chamber, I became known as the Merchant Services Guru. And so that actually became like my my brand was the Merchant Services Guru. But a few years in, I had a customer say to me, you know, you're a lot more than my Merchant Services Guru. When I recommend you to other business owners, I tell them that you're my business resource guy because you seem to know everybody. You're like a walking Yellow Pages or a walking Chamber of Commerce, and you've already done the vetting. So if you recommend a graphic designer to me, they're not going to be crap. They're going to be really talented. You know other people whose businesses they've worked with. And um, let me see if I give a quick, let's see if this works, give a quick shout out to my, <laughs> there's my business logo that my graphic designer helped me with. Very cool. I recommended her to other people. And um, so the business resource guy came from leveraging, schmoozing, and connections and relationships that I had and using them to help other people be successful in their business because most people are not out there. And so I know that the focus of business banter is not to talk about my credit card processing business. It's for us to have a conversation about how to be successful in business and we started with the concept of, of us talking about schmoozing. And schmoozing is really just a relationship builder, a connector. And leverage is another great expression and term for that. Casey, I know that you just did something. It showed off on a, on a, uh, uh, a Google Hangout that you did that I want to bring up that I thought was absolutely brilliant. It's altruistic and it leads to serious leverage. And that's that form that you've created with like 30 different things. Like asking people, hey, would you fill out this form? And on that, what are some of the things that you are asking people if they need help with, or what kind of resources they're looking for? Talk about that form because I love that form. Yeah, I have a I have a form. I don't have one right in front of me. I wish I could grab one. But when I do a speaking event or a speaking engagement, I'll hand out a, a form, and on that form, it will ask them, hey, do you need help with web? Uh, do you need a website? Is your website in WordPress? What are your I get all their information as much as I can, and then on that form I ask them, "Hey, are there any of services listed on here that you that you need help with? I'd love to introduce you to my network." And then I say, "Hey, look, I'll give you a free hour strategy or discovery call." And on that call, I'm I'm basically looking at that form and I'm seeing what they wrote and I'm seeing who I can introduce them to. So it's a great way where you have one person in a room, but they may need help with seven or eight social media, search engine optimization, credit card processing. I mean, you can do a ton and now you have you're surveying the group and seeing what what type that what stuff they need. That being altruistic in that way leads to income generation, which, you know, let's just say it, it's okay to make money referring people and sending people to other business owners that they need that they're going to use their services and get help from because that's what it takes. Money drives, you know, money drives business and commerce. We all need it and we're all, we've all, I think for many years, so many of us have just been willing to do so much to be helpful and not monetize it. And it's okay to monetize relationships in a business environment and one way to do that um, is by providing those connections for other people that they would have to look they would have to spend a lot of time finding a really good vetted professional graphic designer that you can already say to them yeah this guy is great 
my, my, my girlfriend is in the process of launching um, uh, launching a very interesting project at the Cannes Film Festival, and she's got a uh, website that I was able to talk to her about what the website was going to be, what the needs were for the website, and because of the way I've schmoozed and networked over the years, I said, I've got these guys, this team of web designers, this is completely in their wheelhouse, and on your fast uh, turnaround time that you need, I absolutely know we can pick up the phone and they'll get it done. And being that person, being like the center of this wheel of connections, not only makes you very valuable and can make you money, but it also feels really good. Don't you feel really good every day, Karen, when you get up, or Casey, when you get up, knowing that you've got a pocket full of ways that you can help everyone you come in contact with? It's a great way to do business, and it's a great way to lead your life. Absolutely. You know, you, you you touched on so many cool so many cool things there. Um, you know, the interesting thing is that businesses pay money to acquire a customer, whether that's with advertising dollars, whether that's marketing dollars, whether that's referral dollars. It doesn't really matter. They're paying to acquire a customer. So I used to get all wishy-washy, and now I have a group of businesses that say and recognize, hey, I know that a lead and a recommendation coming from Casey Eberhardt has a higher chance of closing than uh, uh, somebody that buys a, 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 that clicks on an ad in a in a pay per click ad, so they're okay with paying me to to do that. I mean, I joke around that I want to be the best player of the game hot potato that exists. I want to generate a lead over here, pass it to somebody over here, take a tiny slice out the center, and get that lead off of my off of my uh, plate as fast as possible. But that's because I am a great lead generator. I know what I'm good at. I'm in the entire sales supply chain sequence from lead to actual purchase, I'm really good at two of the three components. I'm really good at creating leads and I'm really good at closing deals. I am not good at nor do I have any interest in practicing the craft of follow up. I hate it. It's a way I, I just it's not my it is not my shtick. So I bring in a group that can help me facilitate that. Um, but, but Richard, I had a, such a brilliant idea, and I want to make sure I get this out before the end of the before the end of the call. You said something that I want to tag on, and I'm I'm going to offer this to you personally as a suggestion. But I want everybody on the call to think about how you can implement this one thing in your business, and and the the huge amount of impact that you'll have on on people. So what Richard just talked about was. Um, that he has this whole network of people over here, and he was talking to say his, his girlfriend uh, and doing a web project over here, or when you're out and about, everybody's coming to you saying you're the resource guy, right? Well, if you were to take all of those folks that you recommend, get them on a Google Hangout, do a five-minute interview with them, and I even came up with the name. You call it Rich Recommends, and you just do a series of videos called Rich Recommends, with each of the people in those network of people that you would recommend, drop it in DNet with your web form from Mothernode that says, "Hey, if you want to, if you want more information on credit card processing, you want more information on graphic design, you want more information on how to build a house, whatever it is, fill out this form." Then you take that blog post of you recommending them. You're a third-party person under a category of rich recommends. And you let them go promote that video, which they will because you're talking about them, making them feel all warm and fuzzy and altruistic. And at the end of the day, they're driving traffic back to help you generate leads for them that you're then going to take a slice out of the center. It is the perfect sequence of schmoozing, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I actually, uh, you said something on, I think it was on, a call that you did where no one else showed up like a week or two ago and I watched the video where you talked about the concept of that any business owner could set up a corner in their business with their logo behind it and interview their best customers, their vendors, etc. and post it up on the web so thereby creating a digital footprint for themselves. And I, that's leverage and that's you know it's it's funny it ties in it's leverage and it's schmoozing because it's altruistic it makes their customer feel good that they're recognized. It makes their vendors feel good that they're recognized. 
And the leverage part of it is it gives everybody involved and all the people they're connected with um, additional resources. Everybody wins. I mean, you know, I was just thinking that I, I, I actually, that's, I do that when I do consulting for brick and mortar businesses. I'm like, the first thing you're doing is setting up a video booth, testimonial booth, call it whatever, call it whatever you want. But going back to the example I gave earlier of this 40 interviews, here's the reality. There were 450 people in the room or 400, 450 people in the room. And I said, look, is it po and I had cameras in my face the whole time. I mean, I had cameras literally like right in my face. I hired photographers to come down and shoot that video and shoot that um, from a still perspective. And people were like, well, isn't it obnoxious to have cameras in it? I said, the difference is all the other speakers are here to speak at the event. I'm creating a digital asset for after the event because the reality is between that video and the 40 videos I shot, I asked the room, I said, is it possible over the course of the next year that collectively those 41 videos will be seen by more than 450 people? It's like, well, of course. That's 10, that's 10, views, of, that's 10 views on each video. So when people say, well, I don't like video or I don't understand the power of video or whatever, the reality is that if you don't figure this out quickly, you're going to just be in a world of hurt. You know, I, I, I let me and let me just say I was telling Karen this earlier today, and then I'll, I'll I'll wrap it up and I'll give you some final thoughts, Richard. I'm gonna I'm not introducing a new concept, but I want to show you guys just the power of how important the digital space is. A good close friend of mine, Davin Michaels, just made the New York Times bestseller with his book Outsource Smart, and one of the things that that they did not or were unable to anticipate throughout that campaign of building the audience for that book to drive the sales from the New York Times bestseller is he said when they're doing the daily Barnes and Noble check that there's like there were a hundred books sold more than what the bookstores are showing in a given day then the next day it was like 200 and the next day it was like 400 the next day it was 500 additional books that weren't showing up in physical book sale copies. They couldn't figure it out and then it dawned on them what people were actually doing is they're walking into a Barnes and Noble, seeing the book, getting on their mobile device and buying it on Amazon because it was three or four dollars cheaper. Yep. To me that is a massive insight into how business works because if Bar think of the the tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars that Barnes and Noble is losing out because they don't have an environment right there right now on the spot to meet people where they buy stuff which is online yeah they're missing out on, on they're, they're not thinking about how their customers actually act they're thinking about it's just like you said this most of the speakers are at the event that you were at to sell stuff that day there, there's no vision for the long term and it's, you know, well, hopefully, hopefully the three of us and working together with DNet and Mother Node on the supply chain will be able to teach enough people um, to actually start to think long term. But that's really, you know, getting back to sort of my, my new always be schmoozing uh, tagline is that uh, people need to always be uh, making connections with people just for the sake of making connections. Will something come out of it? Sure, something's going to come out of it. Something will come out of it in the immediate part, which is you very well may make somebody's day. What does Casey Everhart say on Facebook almost every day? Make somebody's day awesome today. Um, you, you might just make somebody's day. You will feel good yourself because in the act of schmoozing, you're forming a relate, you know, having a friendly relationship with someone. And you never know what's going to come of it. Some friendly person that you met and chatted up in the elevator sees you a couple of days later as you're checking out, let's say, in the kind of environment I'm in right now, and they say, you know, I, I just I wanted to get your business card. I had such a great conversation with you the other day, even for 45 seconds. Let's stay in touch. And I bring that up because I've had exactly that kind of thing happen and wound up doing business with someone. But even if I didn't, I was friendly, I schmoozed, I had a relationship with them. It created leverage ultimately 
But the number one lesson of the whole always be schmoozing is just go out, be friendly, give a crap yep. about people, care about yep. what you do, love what you do, or for God's sakes, find something else to do. Absolutely. And you know, it's funny, I, I tell people all the time, you have to be present when you're having these conversations and be present in the moment. And the most profitable presentation, the most profitable speaking engagement I've ever had in my entire career as a speaker came from doing a presentation in a deli in San Francisco thinking I was driving up to do a, a big giant event and there were two people that showed up. And because of those two people, the most profitable speaking event I've ever done in my life based on just the connections because I showed up, I gave 100% to just those two people and those two people, the connections I made from one of them, unbelievable. I mean, uh, uh, Karen will tell you Kara is a, is a, is a great friend and, and she's introduced me to more people than probably everybody in my network, all because of that one thing. So you guys, here's the deal. It's time to get schmoozing. So here's what we would like for you to do. This is your call to action. If you don't understand how to use a Google Hangout and you're watching a Google Hangout like this, I want you to connect with Karen Glasser right there on the screen. She teaches people how to use Google Hangout effectively so you bypass all the, I don't know how to upload a video, crap. So get in touch with Karen. Richard, I am so over the moon with excitement of having you part of our DNet community and our mother node community because you really get it. And if we can take and harness our ability to schmooze people one on one and schmooze one to many, it is so important, you guys. It is absolutely imperative. Uh, you can get in touch with Richard or Karen about DNet. I'm sure they'll happy to, to talk to you. I know Karen has a site that we're about ready to launch with her called DNetSpeakers.com. You guys, it's going, going to be a trip. It's going to be tons of fun. There's going to be a web form. I know this is shocking, but there's going to be a web form right below this video. If you'd like to get in touch with – I know, right? If you'd like to get in touch with any one of the three of us, just go ahead and fill that web form out, and we'll get back in touch with you and see how we can fulfill your needs. So with that, Richard, thank you so very much for being a guest on, on Business Banter. I'm sorry that David's not here, but you know what? That's fine with me because I wanted to be able to talk as much with you as possible. Thank you. It was great. I, I love this. And, and uh, coming soon, richrecommends.com. I love it. I think it's I think it's uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a great concept anyways. So Karen, thank you so much for having us. You guys have an absolutely amazing day. Tomorrow go out and give somebody else an absolutely awesome day and we'll see you next week on the show.